Hey YouTube, it's me, Steve, again from Rescape 2.0. Got another video today. <clears throat> it's going to be a continuation of the previous video about um, all the ways that the present moment can break. <clears throat> and I mentioned the, the general category of the, <clears throat> excuse me, of, of usually when the present moment breaks, it's because there's a suddenness, a change in suddenness. So like flipping a light switch or you know opening or shutting a door anything that like has an on off you know because the change between the on and off if it's quick you know if it's instantaneous then the present moment has to break because there's no transition and there's always a transition in the present moment but the faster it is the tighter the transition and then the stronger the mind has to be and as i was pointing out all these things and how in modern times how like everything around us seems like it's designed to break the present moment if not it just happens to be that way the there's also because I said you know a long you know a couple of videos back that the people who lived fifty thousand years ago were always in the present moment and had to do that to survive, but even back then there were things to break the present moment, and it's interesting the way why they break the present moment because here you know in our time the present moment breaks because of just convenience back then it broke because things were trying to kill them or they're trying to defend themselves. Because even when they would fight, they'd be in the present moment because you pretty much have to fight in the present moment. Otherwise, you're going to get hit and not realize it. But besides suddenness, you can also, the, the, the frequency of sounds, like low pitch sounds are easier to be in the present moment than high pitch sounds because the brain knows that high pitch sounds have higher frequencies. And then, the, you know, it's not the amplitude, but the frequency of the curve of the up and down is tighter together. So somehow it pierces the brain more, you know, <clears throat> how it knows that, you know, independent of science, I have no idea, but what you do, what you have here, and you see this in nature too, if you think about animals that make high-pitched noises, um, like let's say an owl, like the screech of an owl, an owl screeches right before it grabs a rabbit because it wants to knock the rabbit out of the present moment, the rabbit tenses, and then the owl uses the tension to pick up the rabbit to fly away. So <clears throat> things will do that, like things will will make noises, like men, when men yell in fights, it gives us power, but when women scream, it's designed to take away the power of whatever is attacking them. Because again, for God forbid, you know, you're I'm attacking a woman or whatever, and she screams. If I was in the present moment, and you notice, it's not just like pop. It's not like a, a one instant scream either. It like it elongates. So the longer it lasts and the higher pitch it is, <clears throat> the more likely it is to knock me out of the present moment. And and so that's designed. It's not a coincidence women scream like that. Like that's clearly what it's for back in a time where everything was in a present moment. And if you weren't, it was a huge disadvantage. You basically, the creatures that lived and hunted and, and fought and survived, they took advantage of that. Like you want your opponent not to be in the present moment because they're, because they're a lot weaker. It doesn't mean the woman would fight whoever was trying to attack them, but it definitely makes sure that they'll take a lot longer to get killed and then other people can come help them, that kind of thing, because it also alerts everybody else. And then, <clears throat> and that's the other thing too, the present moment, when you have the way the present moment breaks, because the spirit is, you know, unlimited, it can perceive everything all at once, and it has no problem. The mind, in order to be still for the spirit to do that, the present moment, the limiting agent when the present moment breaks is when the mind's no longer still. And the reason the mind would no longer be still for a trained or untrained mind is because the level of information that's perceiving is beyond its capacity. So like high pitch sound has a lot more information than a low pitch sound. You know, if it's twice, you know, if it's two octaves higher, it has twice the amount of information. And then if everything is still around you, the information is based off the details of things. Like when you're in a house and you have all this stuff, like all this, you know, messy stuff. But then in nature, like things kind of blend together. Like you don't really look at a tree, you kind of see like all the trees all at once are all around you. There's that uniform kind of thing too. So there's that, and that's when you're still. So the easiest thing, assume all things being equal, one way to add a significant amount of information in the present moment is rapid change. And that's why the present moment <coughs> breaks with rapid change with minds that aren't super strong. <coughs> because think about it. Let's say let's say you're you lived back then. What are the things that could that have rapid change that could add huge amounts of information? And the obvious one that comes to my mind is lightning because it's pretty much instantaneous. And, you know, even though a lightning bolt itself, if you just looked at a picture, it doesn't have that much information. The fact it's there and gone in a split second, the way you would stay in the present moment for that split second, where that wouldn't knock you out, you would literally have to be aware 
of the lightning bolt growing up into the sky or down into the ground and then just and then growing and disappearing and and be able to see all of that and it you know and there's people that train their minds to be able to do that like tai chi masters and things like that but we're like falling um if an acorn hit your head you're underneath the tree you know it's very likely just for a split second it would knock you out of the present moment you know living fifty thousand years ago there's certain things back then even back then earthquakes you know that happen often but i'm sure they'll knock you out things that amaze your mind like an, an eclipse like right after you know the moon starts coming out of the sun where the sun starts shining again i guarantee you none of them are in the present moment because they're still thinking about the eclipse that just happened so there's all sorts of ways even back then but you can see there's defenses against it too because if you go your whole life in the present moment your mind gets stronger and stronger can hold more and more information to where it can see all the details around you if it's still or moving and then faster and faster and so you know if you get attacked by a lion and it roars and it looks mean because it's trying to make you afraid or that's how the animal is designed to make you afraid because you can only be you can't be afraid in the present moment so if you are afraid it knocks you out of the present moment and and uh and the roar, roar is a, a lower pitch scream too it's it doesn't take advantage of the fact of its frequency it takes advantage of the fact of its th the amplitude of the waves because another way to you know increase information if it's the transition from one to the other, the, the wider the transition, the more information, not necessarily the speed. So to go from completely silent to a lion's roar, all the difference in the sound and how quick it went from silent to a lion's roar sound, that's a huge amount of information too. And so that could break present moment. Basically, and the same thing too, because if, if you break present moment against a lion, the lion gets the free, shit, the free shot. It gets the first hit at that point because for that split second, you're tense, it can move. And then you're responding to everything it does at that point instead of reacting with it, like what I talked about in Outside the Matrix video, where you have to be responding as it's attacking. And, and so if you're split second late, you're already dead. The easiest way to kill something or to win a fight is to stun them for a split second, and then you get the hit, and they don't have time to do anything about it. And uh, so it's not a long stun, it's just a small stun. Anyway, so these are things that could break the present moment and ways to break, and these are, and all everything I'm talking about now is 50,000 years ago, because I've already gone over modern times. It's ridiculous. There's no reason to even talking about modern times, but they're still designed in 50,000 years ago. There's times about how nature took advantage of these things and how it went about, you know, different creatures use different ways, you know, to either stay in the present moment or, or to knock things out of the present moment. And, uh, and also like when we in the modern times have never been in the present moment and why we med meditate to get in the present moment because in meditation, you're as still as possible. You close your eyes for the least amount of information. You still make sure nothing's happening around you. So the change of what's happening around you is zero. And then the eyes, the details are zero. And then you listen to your breath. So your awareness is just on your breath. It's like the most simple thing. And the, the most simple thing in the present moment is your breathing. Because one of the reasons you breathe without thinking about it is because part of you that breathes is always in the present moment or usually until you do it manually so um hey this is only eight minutes that's good i think i went through a lot of information in eight minutes so i'm just gonna leave it there and i should make sure there's nothing else for for our in the video that i wanted to say mm. so anyway yeah the point of this video is that being in the present moment even 50,000 years ago it wasn't necessarily easy. It's just the way the games were played and things evolved took advantage because the animals know, like the owl that screeches knows what it's doing. It knows that's what the rabbit's going to do. And so, and then humans going up against, you know, larger animals, they know they're going to make a sound or most of them do. And so they have to, you know, build up their mind against that. So anyway, I think it's pretty neat. Um, and then in the modern times, if you do Tai Chi or practice or anything like, you know, expanding your mind or building root making a strong mind you'll notice that you'll be able to see more and more details when you look ahead not just like you know pictures of one thing or other or things that used to be like boop 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 will start moving like a movie or cinema because of the information you can see now in real time like when you imagine things you can imagine things moving in your head instead of like pictures of things and you can always grow i mean if you know the training you can always get better at it and back then they got better at it from the you know day they were born as a child to an adult and forever as long as they lived they were always getting better at it because that was just part of how they lived. And then we don't train at all. So we're all babies with it, but it doesn't matter because we're not there anyway. And uh, so it takes very little information to break us out of the present moment. So, okay, I think that's it. Um, the Steve Rescape 2.0. I don't know, caveman present moment.